Alrighty, how's it going? Today I want to talk to you guys about kombucha. So in this video, uh, I've recorded my friend and I starting our own SCOBY from scratch, then um, leading up to uh, eventually making our own kombucha. So um, we followed kombucha revolution, their steps. There's a bunch of stuff online but um, this is just a book that I found and it's pretty helpful. This is what we went with. It's by, uh, sorry if I butcher your name, by S Stephen Lee with Ken Copeman. So, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. We purchased a glass two gallon jar, total of 32 ounces of original kombucha. And all you need to do to start your SCOBY is just pour them in and that's it. Make sure the top is uh, aerated. We went ahead and used a cheesecloth and a rubber band. And um, most importantly, make sure you mark your dates so you know when you started doing things. And add love. Go ahead and give your SCOBY some good positive vibes. And go ahead and let them sit undisturbed until your SCOBY is formed out of the sunlight. So once your SCOBY is formed, you're going to want to boil, bring up to boil six cups of water and you want to make sure that your hands are clean because the scoby is very sensitive so go ahead and bring your jar out grab the top off gently grab the scoby with clean hands, remember clean hands put it aside in a separate container try to lay it out as far no, as no, possible just, dude this feels so weird. and uh, go ahead and pour that um, that starter brew all over it and you're gonna notice some strands some sediment some brown stuff all that it is it's it's actually pretty good it's it's just the natural yeast strains and um, it's a part of the, the, the fermentation so don't think that your your stuff went bad all right and once your water is reached to boil go ahead and turn off the heat and take it off add eight tablespoons of uh, tea. We use the yerba mate tea. Go ahead and let it seep for four minutes. And uh, in between that, at the two minute mark, we went ahead and uh, stir it in. And uh, go ahead and put the top back on. And once it's ready, make sure you strain it. We kind of made this makeshift strainer since we didn't have anything. We had a separate uh, mason jar and some cheesecloth, and uh, just try to make, just try to take extract as much tea as possible. And once you go ahead and pour the rest of the tea into the bigger jar, add your sugar, one cup of sugar. Go ahead and stir it, and add eight <laughs> cups of water. It might get messy, but that's fine. Alright, go ahead and keep on stirring and stirring get that mixture flowing. Make sure you follow the ingredients. This, unfortunately, it's easy, but it's not. You can mess up any little thing, but rest assured, try to have fun while you do this stuff and stuff, you know. But um, as for the SCOBY, it's a living thing. So make sure that the temperature, I've, I've seen a lot of things suggested online. This book says 72 degrees room temperature. There's some videos that I've seen that says as long as it's below 100. But uh, just for the sake of being safe, we're gonna go ahead and make it room temperature. Once it's ready, go and have, go ahead and add the starter brew. Once you have that, gently place the scoby into the mixture. Now, it's fine if it doesn't float it'll eventually once it starts fermenting and all you need to do is go ahead and place the top back on and now we play the waiting game again so make sure to redate it like I said um, unfortunately we're in cold temperature over here in California at the moment so it did take a long time for us to, to get this going but we're determined 
and go ahead and give your SCOBY again once again some love and place it back in its location out of the sunlight and undisturbed. We hopefully were trying to increase the warmth so we, we gave our, our SCOBY some sweaters. So once you believe it's ready, go ahead and taste test. If it's too sweet, that means it needs to be fermented a little bit longer, but if it's if it's just right, go ahead and add your SCOBY. You'll notice that another one is formed. The top one is the baby. And the bottom one, which you see there, is the mother. It's a little thicker now. And uh, go ahead and reserve two cups of the kombucha. Make sure it's try to level it out. All right, now it's time to select your flavor. We went ahead and did the holiday spice kombucha, which required four cinnamon sticks, 32 blueberries, and eight cardamom pods. We evenly distribute that into our jars, which holds 64 ounces. Once you get that going, Try to evenly distribute your kombucha. Uh, try to leave about, if it fills up to the top, try to leave a one inch uh, air pocket. And uh, once you have that, you're done. You, you can tell that it's already fizzy, but you have to now do the second fermentation process. So you want to cap these pretty well and let them sit for 48 hours. And like I mentioned before, you just repeat. You do the whole thing again if you're gonna if you're gonna want to continue doing another batch of uh, of kombucha. Um, we the first time the go around was uh, just kind of like a trial, so we, we just followed the recipe from the book. But this time uh, we doubled it since we noticed our jar was so big. So um, this time we're gonna we filled it up to the very very top. And uh, we waited again, most importantly, that the, it was back to room temperature before adding our scobies. And uh, once you have that, you let that sit. Go ahead and wait 48 hours. Let your new holiday spice kombucha sit in the refrigerator for a couple of, couple of hours. And you'll notice a nice fizz. So... Now just enjoy. Go ahead and pour yourself a glass, like we did. And... Enjoy. Alrighty, so I have a list of things that I probably forgot to mention. Um, so if you don't know what a SCOBY is, SCOBY stands for Symbiotic Colony of Bacteria and Yeast. It's essentially a mushroom. Um, I believe they don't grow in the wild anymore, or if they did. Uh, so which is you know, why you have to get it from a friend or from online or, or create your own. I don't think you can find one in the wild. That would be kind of cool. But another thing, the container that you put your kombucha in, make sure it's either glass or unleaded ceramic. If it's plastic or metallic metal, it might leach harmful you know, chemicals, so you don't want that. Um, and the reason why you make it is because it benefits. You know, um, it's really good for your gut garden. It um, has antioxidants. It has pro it's probiotic. It has uh, enzymes that gives you energy. Um, I personally stop um, stop drinking like stuff like Gatorade. It's pretty bad for you. It's just sugar water, and even though a lot of sugar goes into this, don't don't be scared. You're not gonna drink it all. It's food for the for the for the scoby, you know. So at the end product, it, it won't be as sugary, you know, because the, the scoby will eat it up. That's it needs that. The scoby's eating. That's, that's what's causing the fermentation. Um, besides that, um, that's pretty much it. 
so go ahead and uh, shoot me any uh, recipes because I'm, I'm flying now. You know, uh, I absolutely fell in love with this process and I want to do this for the, for the rest of my life, you know. Um, so just another way to you know do things on your own and, and, and make your own things that, that heal yourself and they're delicious. So um, I hope you guys enjoyed it, liked it, um, and I'll see you soon. Peace.